Welcome back to the advanced tutorial. In this part, we'll start designing the submarine and explore various 3D drawing techniques you can use in Feather. If you haven't watched part one yet, I recommend checking it out first. It's short, but useful. And if you're completely new to Feather, the basic tutorial might be a better place to start. All the files and assets used in this tutorial are available for download. Check the description for details. All right, let's get started. Let's start by talking about references. When creating something in detail, having strong references is essential. And when designing in 3D, it becomes even more important since you need to consider every angle. That means gathering a wide range of references to work from. In our process, we think of references in three ways. First, there's the kind you directly reference while drawing, helping to add details and accuracy. Then, there's inspiration, things that spark creativity and push the design in new directions. And finally, there's the motive, the starting point that shapes the entire idea. Good references make a design more convincing and rich in detail. The more elements you can study, the better. If you're designing a submarine, for example, a close-up image of a propeller would be incredibly useful. Inspiration and motive, on the other hand, can be anything that excites you. The best ones are a little unexpected, but share key traits with what you're creating. Let's take a look at the references used in this tutorial. The submarine we're designing is a single seat, light submersible. To match Lighty's style, I've gathered references with a clean and polished look. Lighty's design was inspired by real-world products and Feather's own features, so the submarine follows that same design language, drawing inspiration from something built for movement. The 3D joystick in Feather. Alright, now that we have enough references, let's go back to the thumbnail sketch. You might wonder why we're still sketching in 2D, but one of the biggest advantages of getting comfortable with 3D drawing is being able to choose the right dimension to work in at any moment. Let's start with a small rounded shape, something that feels casual yet functional and professional. We'll begin with the classic circular window you'd expect on a submarine, then add thrusters and other necessary components as we refine the design. The window is intentionally designed to create a balance between openness and enclosure. If the entire body was visible through the glass, it might take away from the sense of adventure. Next, we'll introduce more complex curves and break up the symmetry to add visual interest. And since we can adjust everything in 3D, we'll just sketch the side view for now to establish the overall form. All right, let's bring this into Feather. Import the prepared sketch, then use the joystick to adjust its position and size. Before drawing, make sure the mirror direction is set correctly. We'll be using it for curve drawing. For better visibility, choose a color that contrasts with the background. And since this is a technical drawing, don't forget to double tap with three fingers to switch to orthographic mode. Now follow the 2D sketch and start forming the side profile and basic shape. To draw a perfect circle, pick two points along the diameter from a slightly tilted angle then use draw shape for accuracy. Once you have a center circle, duplicate it to create guidelines for depth. Adjust their position and size to match the sketch. Continue this process for the body and window, erasing any unnecessary parts to keep things clean. As you keep copying and placing circles, the basic shape will start coming together. This part is the water intake. Start by creating a 3D guide based on the 2D sketch then switch to front view and refine the proportions. Since we'll be duplicating it three times to match the 3D joystick shape, make sure to keep it clean and precise. Use Liquify to smoothly connect it to the body curves. Instead of dragging in one motion, tap multiple times for more accurate adjustments. Drawing everything in 3D at once can be tricky. It's easier to get the shape right in one view first, then fine-tune it from other angles. That way, a single 2D sketch is all you need. Next, add any missing curves from different angles. 
At this stage, it's better to focus on what looks good in 3D rather than strictly following the 2D sketch. A deep sea submarine needs to withstand extreme pressure. So its pressure hull is designed as a strong spherical shape. This is something we learned through reference research. Using the primitive shape function, create a spherical 3D guide, then start drawing the internal structure. Make sure each stroke maintains a consistent width for a clean result. Select the cleanly painted surface, then change the material to shaded, and after that, switch to render mode. If your device can handle it, working in render mode helps maintain the mood and concept throughout the process. Select the glow material, lower the transparency, and paint the window. This gives the effect of a softly illuminated interior. If there are gaps, simply increase the curve size to fill them in. Don't worry about getting a perfect curve in one go, or strictly following the 2D sketch. Adjust freely based on how it looks in 3D. Now, let's start filling in the body by painting its surfaces. First, create a 3D guide along the side profile curves, then use the band 3D guide function to shape a multi-curved surface. Use the pre-drawn curves as a reference and for best results, warp guides in a perfect view like top or side view. Set the material to shade, then use a wide brush to paint the surface. Adjust the brush spacing to keep it clean. All right, let's save this guide for later use. Slide the close button upward to save them. Next, duplicate this curves and transform them into a three axis shape, similar to the 3D joystick. Before continuing, clean up any unnecessary curve sections. This time, draw the 3D guide from the front view, then bend it in the side view. Then, just like before, paint over it again. After painting, use Liquify to smooth out the connections. To speed things up, copy and paste the shape. You can adjust the light direction in the lighting tab inside the environment settings to check the shape. Now let's move on to the propeller. Create a guide from the side view, then bend it from the rear view. Paint it the same way as before. To see the form more clearly, select all painted curves and brighten the colors slightly. Looks a bit simple, doesn't it? A deep sea submarine could use a bit more detail. So, here's a tip. Just like we've been doing, Feather lets you reuse existing curves in multiple ways. By reusing curves, you can add a lot of detail without having to redraw everything from scratch. Select the reference curves you've drawn earlier and change them to the desired color. Duplicate them or adjust the thickness to refine the details. If they don't align perfectly with the body, use Liquify to fine tune the placement. Switch efficiently between drawing and selecting and moving to speed up your workflow. Okay, let's add more details. First, reload the 3D guide we used earlier. In the Resource tab, tap the cube icon to choose whether to keep resources active, visible, or invisible. Set it to active, then start drawing the line details using the cube brush. For larger areas, switch to the wide brush. The key design element of this submarine is its external control system and intakes, inspired by the 3D joystick. To make this part stand out, apply a glowing material and paint over it. It's easier to adjust color and brightness later. So for now, set each light color to match the actual 3D joystick. Carefully tweak the brightness and saturation to get the exact look you want. Now, let's add a more complex detail, the protective guard for the submarine. 
This requires a multi-curved surface with intricate shaping. Start by drawing a half circle guide from the rear view. Then, in the top view, use the band 3D guide to create a half pipe structure wrapping around the body. When working with complex banded guides, make good use of perfect views and mentally visualize the final shape before drawing. And don't forget, you can tap the band 3D guide again to retry as many times as needed. If you're still getting used to it, check out our tutorials on band 3D guide for more guidance. Once the guide is in place, for the rest is easy. Just paint along the curve, keeping an eye on the stroke direction. Then erase and refine as needed. Below the body, there's a small storage box. This is where collected items from the adventure are kept. Draw the key curve, then use it as a base to paint the surrounding surfaces. For any uneven parts, refine them with liquify. Drawing the propeller is a fun part because you can easily create it using copy and paste. First, Use the band 3D guide to create a cone shape, then position it in the propeller area. Real propellers have much more complex curves, but for this tutorial, we'll keep it simple by drawing a tilted 3D guide instead. In 2D joystick mode, rotations are based on the screen center. So after selecting the propeller, align its center to the middle of the screen, then copy, rotate, and paste to complete the shape. Let's add pipes inside the guard for more mechanical detail. Follow the existing curves, draw the lines, and adjust the shape with liquify. Here's a technique I use often, duplicating a curve and switching to a different brush type. This time I combine the cube brush and diamond brush, creating a churro-like cross-section. If Feather adds more brush shapes in the future, this trick will be even more useful. Now, let's freely sketch and place the silhouettes of additional components, then add lights to the front of the guard. If you need extra thickness, copy and paste to quickly stack up layers. Slightly adjusting brush size can also add a nice design touch. Next, Let's draw the connecting frame between the guard and body. When designing, it's just as important to focus on seamless connections as it is on the main shapes. Instead of having parts look like they're just stuck together, add connection accents to make the structure feel more integrated. Now back to the lights. Estimate the rough position and sketch a guide in front view. Use draw shape to create a clean circular form. Since we want extra thickness, duplicate and paste the shape. Switch the material to glow, then enhance the light effect at the front. If you want a stronger bloom effect, add more low opacity strokes around it. Be careful not to overlap too much, or the texture may look unnatural. Once the light is done, duplicate it into four copies it's really starting to come together. Finally, let's add the interior. For objects like cars, planes, and submarines, having both an interior and exterior makes the design feel much more detailed. First, the glass is too bright, so let's lower the opacity to balance the brightness. Then, hide any groups that might get in the way while drawing the inside. Pay attention to interior colors, since we're depicting a space lit by blue-toned light, using cooler shades will help maintain the atmosphere. Let's start with a control panel for piloting the submarine. To refine details, we'll use a thin brush as well. And of course, we need a seat. When designing interior spaces, improvising based on your own experiences often works best. Think about what feels natural. How high should the seat be? What kind of backrest would be comfortable? What controls would be needed for operation? By considering usability, you can create a cockpit layout that feels both functional and fun to draw. And of course, it's a submarine. So someone has to be inside. 
In this tutorial, we've placed Lighty and Azealia in the cockpit, but as you might know, drawing characters in Feather requires some tricky 3D drawing techniques. That's why we recommend waiting until part 5 before tackling the character section. For now, in part 2, we'll move past this step quickly. A dedicated character tutorial is coming soon. Stay tuned. Instead, in this tutorial, we'll show the entire character drawing process in time lapse. Okay, how's it going so far? It might feel a bit new and complex, but mastering these techniques will make 3D drawing even more enjoyable. In the next part, we'll design a mysterious deep sea creature and explore how to create organic shapes. By making full use of Liquify, we'll bring fluid, unique forms to life in 3D. So don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next part.